Welcome back to Morning Joe. As we've mentioned this morning, there is a new op-ed in the Washington Post authored by seven freshman Democrats, all with national security credentials, who say if the allegations about President Trump and Ukraine are true, it is an impeachable offense. Joining us now, two of those seven House Democrats, Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger of Virginia and Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan. We, we thank both of you for being with us. And I, I want to seize on those words, if the allegations are true. Well, let's talk about what we already know to be true. Donald Trump froze three, had his chief of staff freeze um, almost $400 million in military aid to a struggling democracy invaded by Vladimir Putin, froze funding despite the fact that it came over from Congress, gave no excuses for freezing that money. And while Ukraine desperately uh, pleaded to meet with the president, he refused to meet with them or to talk to the president. When he finally talked to them, Eight times he told the president of Ukraine, while this money was frozen, that he had to work with his personal attorney to do opposition research against Joe Biden. Is that not in and of itself worthy of an impeachment inquiry? Congresswoman Spanberger, you go first. Okay. So these are the allegations that we as a collective group found to be absolutely uh, a threat to our democracy, absolutely uh, just chilling in the depth and breadth of these, these allegations. And in our op-ed, what we stated is every tool that the U.S. Congress has, every tool that we as members of Congress have, uh, should be employed at this point in time to ensure that we know the facts and that we can mm -hmm. either completely prove or disprove these, these stunning allegations uh, against the president. Absolutely stunning. Alyssa Slotkin, you tweeted, I swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. If true, these new allegations against the president are a threat to our national security and constitute an impeachable offense. How are you, uh, how are you doing with communicating these efforts and this position that you are holding with your constituents? Sure. So, uh, you know, obviously this can be a divisive issue in my district, but yeah. I think, you know, for all of us who signed the op-ed, we've all served previously, either in the intelligence community or in the military. We've all sworn an oath to the Constitution many, many times in our career, and again, as Congress people. And I think, you know, the, the district I come from, and I think for Abigail as well, they supported us and elected us because they want leaders with integrity. And so while it may be a controversial issue, uh, when you look at the facts and you look at this specific instance, I think this is a total game changer. I think it's something new. And I think that they understand that I have to move with my conscience, as we all did. Yes. Congresswoman Spanberg, I want to ask you the same question. You won your race uh, by less than two points, defeating an incumbent in your district. There's been a lot of talk around impeachment over the last year or so with some people in up for grabs districts saying, boy, it's just a step I can't take. I'll lose my seat. So tell me about your calculation to participate in this op-ed. Did you consider the political costs at all, as some others have before they've stepped out. So in looking at my district, and I'm from a central Virginia district, my district did vote for the president in 2016. My calculation is ensuring that 2020, our democracy is stronger and better, that our voters feel that their votes count. And for me, the calculation uh, that I put into this is, am I standing up for the Constitution I swore to uphold? And looking at these allegations, they are so substantial and so deeply mm -hmm. concerning that, you know, this doesn't change the fact that we're focused on legislating, we're focused on health care, prescription drug costs, infrastructure, the issues that are deeply important to our constituents, but they also elected us to represent them, as Alyssa said, with integrity. And and this is this is a, a change, this is uncharted waters where we are right now and it's important for all of us to stand up and ensure that our voters understand the severity uh, that our constituents understand the severity of these allegations and that we are firmly firmly stating that these if true are a, a threat to us all a threat to our national security and and we need to stand up and, and make that clear and, and make it clear to our constituents 
the seven of you who authored this op-ed are being characterized as having national security experience. We should be specific. Congresswoman Spanberger was a CIA officer. Congresswoman Slotkin, CIA analyst, staff of DNI, National Security Council, State Department, served in Iraq, among others. Um, so let me ask you, Congresswoman Slotkin, what specifically to you is different about this than what we saw, let's say, in the case of Russia? What are you seeing in front of you that pushed you to join this op-ed? Sure. I mean, I think the very basic facts that the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, would use the leverage of the United States, in this case, security assistance paid for by American taxpayers, to try and press a foreign government to pull up dirt on a political opponent. That right there, you know, and, and uh, there is certainly, um, you know, candidate Trump calling for these things, calling it openly for Russia to help, but there's President Trump, after all we've been through, doing that again and withholding military assistance. And by the way, I mean, people don't remember it, but there is a hot war going on in eastern Ukraine. So you start holding back security assistance, that's a real lever to use with people. But the very basic idea of getting foreign help to influence American political process that is beyond the pale. So Representative Slotkin, uh, you were on the staff of the DNI, National Intelligence, uh, during the Bush administration. So the statute calling for uh, this missive to be forwarded to the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, says it shall be forwarded. Do you see, yeah. based upon your experience and your knowledge of the statute, is there any wiggle room in there? Is the Justice Department right or wrong? No, I, there is no wiggle room. And I was there when we were really pushing for whistleblower protections to be applied also to intelligence officers, because for many, many years they were not. Federal employees and other departments were covered, but through the process of pushing through the DNI's office and with help here in Congress, we got those protections for everybody who works for the federal government. They were designed to be airtight. Um, there is a literal legal responsibility by the DNI to provide those um, documents. We hope that he takes that opportunity on Thursday. He will have ample room in a public hearing to provide that information, and I very much hope he does so, because I think the onus is on the administration, right? With Rudy Giuliani coming out and saying what he said, that, that yes, we actually did ask the Ukrainians to find dirt on a political opponent, it is on the administration to either explain how that isn't true, or explain their actions. And I think unless we get a some sort of miracle, um, it is important that we look at next steps. And I think our group, as national security leaders, believe, yes, impeachment inquiry is a possible option, but we want to be muscular about this. You know, there is an inherent um, uh, uh, contempt. You know, there are new tools um, that we haven't used that I think we feel strongly should be in the toolkit. Uh, hi, it's Steve Ratner. I assume that you guys have casual conversations with Republicans uh, uh, off the floor here and there, wherever you encounter them. Do you have a sense as to whether they are simply trying to be loyal to Trump, whether they have sympathy for these allegations and think they're credible, whether they're, they're truly worried? Do you think in the end this would be a completely partisan vote, or how do you think your Republican colleagues are going to ultimately handle this? Well, I think with the nature of these current allegations, they are forward-looking. Uh, forward As Alyssa mentioned, this is about the President of the United States withholding foreign military and security assistance potentially to his own benefit in an election in 2020. And I think that it is going to be important that every member of Congress, Republican and Democrat, weigh in on this issue into the future. Uh, in my casual conversations with my Republican colleagues, I can't yet get a gauge. Uh, notably, we're, we're just back in session today, so I think that this will be much of the, much of the talking and, and points of discussion that, that we have around here. You know, it is my hope that just as we are endeavoring to put country first, uh, that we will see Republicans step forward and put country over party and certainly over any allegiance to a president who has these significant allegations. And this is about finding the truth. This isn't about partisanship. If these allegations yeah. are true, they are highly, highly um, concerning. They pose a significant risk to our country. And anyone should want to get to the bottom of them, either disproving them or proving them so we can move forward as a country. And we will be watching your efforts closely. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger and Alyssa Slotkin. Thank you both. Thank Very you, thank much. You.
And coming up during his time in office, President Trump has behaved like no other president in modern history. The New York Times, David Leonhardt, is laying out the facts about how he's changed the presidency. Plus, how are Republicans surviving the Trump vortex? David Drucker explores that for Vanity Fair. That's all coming up next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.